You are listening to Let's Go Jojo, the weekly Jojo's bizarre adventure podcast from Dynamite in the Brain and Secret of the Sailor Madness. So come along and hang with the Let's Go gang. Elliot. Hey. Dwayne. Hello. Niall. Is this fate? <laughs> and me, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> this week's episode, Highway Star, episode, part two. In which we drive around Moria being chased by a load of feet. Well, the same well, feet. Yes. Slices of most, most importantly, Queechy walked the dog. That is true. <laughs> I mean, like, if the dog doesn't get his walk in, you know, he gets really cranky. So Pretty old, needs extras. <laughs> and also, general drawings, much better this episode, I would say. Yep. Hmm. It looks a lot more like it, it, its peak early on in the season. But yeah, they, they, he's basically having to drive around 60 kilometers per hour. And he wants to find out more. He thinks the tunnel must be the key to this thing. Got to find out more about that tunnel. But how am I going to find out more about that tunnel when I'm riding around on a mo motorcycle really fast? Koichi, he's a nerd. He'll know what, 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 <laughs> where to look for these kind of things. Also, this show reminded me that phone cards exist. I'd forgotten about those. Oh, I those. Do you, know, do you know anybody who uh, put them in the freezer? Them? No, 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 collected them. <laughs> put, put them in the freezer. What? <laughs> to recharge the credit on them. That was the theory. Yeah, a new type in the nineties just used to have loads and loads of pages of um, like just like advertising, like get all your anime phone cards. Ah, uh, the collect hidden yeah. collector market thing. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah so basically yeah he thinks so he just like yeah makes a call but oh my goodness the stand's caught up with me i had a good two minutes i did the maths in my head <laughs> i love how he did half the maths explained it vaguely and then just said no time and then just carries on driving and it's like okay fair enough whatever you say man <laughs> like you haven't explained why you're off but fair enough <laughs> and he manages to like ruin two people's lives by stealing their mobiles along the way that was amazing. Uh, He's just such a shit that he manages to ruin two people's well, lives as he was passing by. The best thing was the first one, he just ruins the hell of it because he breaks the mobile on the way. He and it's like, it. well, yeah. <laughs> Does that work on the one? It must do, yeah. Because he spends the... Oh, that's a point! Yeah, because he spends the entire episode like feeling out his stand and making it more and more like, I don't know, I guess I'll just punch this car and put it back together again and then steal gas and like deconstruct my motorcycle, fly through the air around a baby and then reconstruct the motorcycle afterwards, which was badass, but also just crazy. Yeah, so I, I guess you forgot about the stand powers. Well, driving on a motorcycle, doing mats, uh, trying to run away from feet, and he forgot he had stand powers until he nearly hit a baby. Yeah, and then he's like, oh shit, baby, better figure this out quickly. Yeah. yeah. Even better is the baby's mother just stops in the middle of the, like, um, crossing to, like, coochie coo the baby. And I'm like, oh. She has oh. the lights, I think, is the thing. Yeah. But yeah. Oh. The driver's so don't mind. I'll think, oh, cute baby. I, I don't mind. It's okay. I No, not, not in Cambridge, man. Those cyclists have run you over at second thought. Baby and mother. Um, it's okay. They can just, like, reform the car around them, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that, I really enjoyed that whole sort of like idiot on a motorcycle finding up new ways to like bugger up things, but also just harass Koichi with his like dumbass dog. It's amazing the way they managed to get some of him being a little shit into this episode because they didn't really have much time for it. Yeah, Koichi, I feel like Koichi's stand is a bad like influence on him. What it was? What was his phrase like? Kill da ho or something? It's like whoa! Echoes. <laughs> he's killed a ho, and then I think he calls her a biatch or something. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. He's a little brat, as that nurse was correctly surmised. Yeah, that nurse was right. Yeah. Oh. It was. She was really. She, her her insult game was on point, though. It's like, oh, if you need an eye exam, come back tomorrow morning, you little shit. And then he gets sent away, and then he decides to be an asshole to her. <laughs> and then it's just a oh, yeah. I don't know. Nice medicine it's... you got there. Awful shame something would have happened to it. Exactly. Yeah. I feel. I feel like this entire series, this entire episode, was full of characters saying things and then instantly regretting they mentioned how important that thing was, both in terms of mobile phones and medicine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, good times. So right when he was driving down the road and he was about to hit uh, a woman and her buggy and pram and uh, baby, I should say. Sorry. 
Um, I thought he was going to punch them so they wouldn't have been in an accident. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that's maybe one <laughs> step too far for like even his power. Maybe Plus, also, I think baby. it'll be fine. I know, but I don't want to see a baby get reformed. Like, even if they censor it. <laughs> As well I, know, true, yeah. I know this is a show that's famous for dog murder, but like I kind of don't want to see a baby get reformed from like four pieces after yeah. being whacked into by a bike. I don't think they've killed any babies yet. No, and also the stand can't bring you back from the back from the dead. So yeah, well, he just has to punch them right when he's ramming into them. Yeah. Oh, I think uh, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just love his cocky attitude towards the end of the whole thing. I, I thought he was going mad because he's like, oh, my bike's out of gas. That sucks, but I can solve this. Yes, I can solve this. And I thought, he's cracked. He's flipped. He's gone nuts. Like, <laughs> he's, clearly, yeah, yeah. he's clearly fed up of all the bullshit he's having to go through to get to this hospital. Um, because at where... that point, it was pretty blind panic, yeah. Yeah, I, so, he, yeah. I kind of wonder why he didn't to steal the car because then that way yeah. protection from the stand well, while you're moving he hasn't had friend. his driving lessons yet yeah I mean he can ride a bike <laughs> but he can't ride a car I guess or drive a car even <laughs> he's only got a license for a motorcycle <laughs> so yeah I, I may be going across town or leaving a trail of destruction behind me but yeah <laughs> I'm going to obey oh. the rules of the road <laughs> I did quite enjoy the like stand user of Highway Star, sorry Highway Go Go, um, laid up in bed with the three lasses fawning over him, um, who were also really funny. But like, he's you just see him and you go, "Wow, that's an asshole stand user," and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm alive. Whatever. I'm got. I'm sucking in all his nutrients. I don't give a shit. I'm an asshole." And it's like, "Wow." I did like that because you didn't like. It was a nice reveal. You didn't know what was going to be behind the. Yeah, because you might thought, "Oh, he's doing it unconsciously." That's what, yeah, that's, that's what I yeah, thought initially. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, we can beat up this motherfucker. I don't yeah. know, like, because the, the, <laughs> he was speaking through the stand last episode, saying, "I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna steal your life." That's true, you. but and dead. Uh, yeah. at the same he could have been having a crazy dream. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Yeah. also, Koichi's got a entirely sentient stand that <laughs> does not seem to have yeah. his personality. I feel like the more and more I feel like the, the more and more stands are becoming sentient and like self willing, they're becoming more and more assholes. Like I don't know, stands are just kind of turning into the. Well, jerk that's, that's true. That's established in Stardust Crusaders with that sword. Oh was, yeah, a total yeah, jerk. Yeah. Like the guy wakes up from his medically induced coma. It's like I feel much better. It's like like dried husks of bodies around him. <gasps> what highway star? What have you yeah. done? <laughs> oh jeez, I'm sorry, boss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I figured it was going to tie back to the, the they talked about the accident on the I think it was on Morio Radio the other day um, where and I was like oh it's going to tie back to that but I figured he got shot by an arrow and fucking crashed while on a motorbike you know what I, I mean? must I must admit, having the old man photograph with the arrow just expositing while flying through the air and giggling is still really weird. <laughs> it's just like, and now for your exposition, like, sort of side note with arsehole McArrow yeah, photo. Yeah, it's Shigeru it's the I, best. Know, I know, I know. Yeah. I, I, that's the reason why it saves it, and I love it. Yeah, but you yeah, we need to explain to me that a photograph shot a dude on a motorbike. That's fine. I understand that's part of the plot, but it's the fun of hearing him just rant. <laughs> I mean, it's Especially because at this point, he's now basically a slave unto the arrow. The arrow yes. chooses the people who become the stands. He's just the, like, willing, yeah. photo-bound, like, magic carpet ride dude. Yeah, because otherwise it'd it. be just an arrow flying around hitting people. And it's much more fun was like, arrow, you want to shoot that guy? Okay, whatever you yeah. say, buddy. Whatever you want, little fella. <laughs> it's a new buddy cop comedy, except it's not really, like, police handing a badge and gun. It's just an arrow and a dude in a photo. So... But yeah, I love I love our man who is the like stand user, who is the biggest prick in the world, and who has. It's amazing how they can make him be an utter prick while laid up in bed with like a. He says like, he has a broken spine or something. Yeah, right? yeah. The best thing is he says that after he's already been fixed, and you're like, well, how are you moving then? And <laughs> you know, he has the whole like throat voice. He has the whole intubated throat type thing, which was kind of gross. Uh, I don't know how the hell he was talking with that thing in the way, but hey. Well, he's uh, absorbed a lot of nutrients. Like, you know, he, it's just recovery oh. is happening unbeknownst to the nurses. Mm. And, and his three groupies. Yeah, yeah the um, powerful who, girls. Who, yeah, who had... <laughs> I didn't thought, think of that. Uh, but then they all have matching tattoos, and I quite liked them. They were quite funny. Um, <laughs> and then our man starts talking about how he's... Not, like, he basically like gets Josuke in the end with like the feet in the back. Uh, and while Josuke's trying to crawl along, he's like, oh, by the way, I'm going to talk... At length with Josuke not in the frame suspiciously about how my my like um 
sense of smell is better. Like, I thought and... that was a stand power. Apparently, that's just his power. He has an excellent sense of smell. Well, I mean, he's, that's how his stand finds people, is through sniffing, either mm. through, like, yeah. the feet or through its nose. And I guess that has a feedback effect on him to make what might have already been a better sense of smell even better, including, like, sexually harassing his groupies. Mm. And then he's like, oh, what if he's really pissed? And they're like, nah, we're fine. And there's Josuke behind him. So, yeah. Yeah, I did and... like the animation early on of the feet sniffing to hunt because it was just toes wiggling while sniffing happened yeah it's quite it's a, a, visual. a surreal visual yeah. yeah it's a really it's a really good use of like the sniffing noise because it's like oh yeah those feet are sniffing and you go yeah okay it's jojo's of course the feet are sniffing what, what do you expect it's menacing <laughs> as well but yeah they looked at kind of wide open though when the guy said oh come on let's smell it back and he pulls the oxygen tube out of his nose and then it cuts back to him it's there it's not there it's there yeah, it's not there. <laughs> yeah. I figured he just kept pulling it in and out yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's those things actually those, th- those things are not fun to pull in and out i'll tell you that much so you probably yeah. shouldn't have been doing that <laughs> it hurts so yeah but yeah then of course josuke goes ham on him throws it like he heals it, like the old man the man says oh no you wouldn't be up and injured man would you and he goes yeah i already fixed you you can move yeah. you'll notice and then throws him out the window and beats the shit out of him um <laughs> yes because otherwise he'd be a coward yeah, as soon yeah. as the door opened and it showed him in bed like that, I was like, oh yeah, he's going to heal him and then beat him up. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Because, I, like or, I say, or I... heal him and then his powers wouldn't work. Like, I presume it maybe could, could be predicated on his own. The stand only works if he has injuries that need healing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, and then they say, like, oh, yeah, he got so scared that now he's not going to use his stand to heal himself anymore and he's got to stick in hospital for a bit. Yeah, and they also made him release Rohan, who was incredibly ungrateful. (laughs) It's Rohan. (laughs) What do you expect? I'm still not your friend. I still think you're an asshole. I love it because he's... I love it because it's the ultimate like I'm not owned, I'm not owned speech of like I'm not going to pay you back for this, you know. I f- fuck you. <laughs> it's just really angry Rohan. And we get everyone's uh, reaction, including Jotaro's, just like I'm not fucking going to get. Yeah, involved. and you even <laughs> write in the yare yare. <laughs> it's not heard, but your brain writes it in. As yeah, it, you can hear it just muttering it themselves as sure. the camera sort of goes towards his face. It's like <laughs> you've seen that expression so many times now that uh, you know exactly what's going through his head. I kind of like that with the show. There's a lot of the stuff that you know is going to happen. As soon as you saw that prick in bed, you were like, oh, this guy's going to get his ass handed to him. As soon as you hear the musical cues coming in, it's like, oh, time for him to get his yeah, ass handed to him. Yep. <laughs> but it's it's so enjoyable to watch it play out, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like, the guy won't, won't ever do it again. Before. <laughs> He's going to come back and finish the job. Uh... <laughs> I think he said he'd keep beating him up. So I presumably he'd just leave him in hospital for the rest of his life. And as soon as he was healed, he just put him back in hospital again. Or if he wasn't healed quick enough, he could just go to hospital, beat, heal him, and then beat him up. <laughs> That'd be the weirdest, like, sort of guest. It's like, hi, it's time for your your fortnightly beatdown. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the doctors are baffled. I understand. He should have been like, you know, up, and, up in our bed by now, but he's not healing. I don't know it's weird. Doing. It's weird. Every time, we, every time we move the stitches, you've got to put more back in again. Weird. Uh. <laughs> But yeah, we're good we're episode. Have to amputate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, a fun episode. Really good blow off to the initial sort of like weird two thirds episode from last week. And also, we get uh, we check in on the family and uh, the Kawajiri family. Yeah, mum yeah. has discovered a cat in the yeah, basement. Really pretty cat. Yeah. Oh, it's a very specific breed she names as well. Is it like yeah, British yeah. Blue? I think. She yeah, says. It's British, yeah, it's British. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Nowadays, it'd be a Scottish fold. Uh, yeah, I was going to make that joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cross marketing. Uh, uh, yeah, this was been my favourite episode for a long time. Really okay. enjoyed it. Yeah. Particularly now, the Stan's powers were a lot more easy to understand. This episode, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, Apart because like, the whole the conceit of the stand is predicated on moving and keeping away from it. Yeah, everything was felt no. The momentum was kept moving forward, so there was yeah. never any kind of uh, lulls in the in, in the episode, really. I mean, like if they managed to cram it in the the earlier part of the episode, the setup would have been perhaps like a, a slow start to it. So it's a good thing that was actually separated into the prior episode as part one, you know. And the clever yeah. use of um, Crazy Diamond was greatly appreciated as well. It was like, when he yeah. realised he could do it, <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of good because each time it was a different like way of using mm. it. 
like like reforming the wall in a different space rather than just putting it straight back where it was because i was like man what's he gonna do with that wall and then like oh he'll just put it somewhere else okay I that thought makes he was gonna sense. trap them behind the wall using the yeah. pieces or something yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, scoop up, scoop up the feet along with the wall. But no, he's just like, oh, I'll do this. So it's nice to see that get going because it's a really, it's really like seemingly non-useful for combat power until you start being really, um, <laughs> really yeah. tricky with it like that. And also the expression on the baby's face was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a future Shonen Jump reader. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that baby grew up to be Joey Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's JoJo's this week. Let's move on to Dragon Ball Super, episode 61. Zamasu's ambition. The terror of the Zero Humans plan. Spoken. And boy, is it spoken a lot this episode. Mm-hmm. Okay, so everyone get out your Dragon Ball Z timeline charts because we need to make a few changes. <laughs> <laughs> Those Those like, Those I'm still slightly games. confused. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, Goku Black is the Zamasu from the first time in Dragon Ball Super that Trunks travelled back in time. So he's the one when they went to visit him to check out him the first time when it's just Goku. I thought Zamasu Black... Oh, no, no, you're right. Zamasu Black is the guy... Is the guy who Goku fought the duel with. Yeah. Yeah, and the only reason he could have fought the duel is because Trunks went back in time the first time and saved Goku. Yeah, that's the end of the episode, is that basically them just going, Trunks, it's all your fault. (laughs) None of this would happen if it wasn't for you messing with time in the first place. Mm. Uh, But yeah, so Goku Black is the Zamasu who fought the duel with Goku. And then in his timeline, presumably... Well, it shows him. He he turns into Goku Black... Well, no, sorry. This, he kills his master first, turns yes. into Goku. Yes. So they, they they wouldn't in his version of time, they didn't. They went back to the future and didn't come back to stop him from. See, I think the second time Trunks went back to the past allowed Goku Black to team up with Azamasu from a, a third alternative timeline yes. that they just fucking created. Uh, yeah, cause... Yes, because he's that's got. Right. I yeah. think yes, because that's the, that's where he gets the time. No, because it can't be the second. Because the second time he comes back. Well, this is the second time. So we okay. Mm. We're in Dragon Ball. Well, we've gone down the wrong pant leg of time. <laughs> yes, pretty much. So Goku Black yeah. is the Zabasu who Goku dueled with. Yeah, a couple of. Episodes. And all his plan worked in his 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 timeline because he then got the ring that was generated from Trunks going back in the first place and travelled forward in time to conduct his plan of using the Super Dragon Balls to swap places with Goku, kill Goku, blah de blah blah then travel forward in time to Trunks' time and meet up with Trunks' Zamasu. So the Zamasu who's in Trunks' time is the present-day Zamasu of Trunks' timeline. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to think, think of it another way, it's like Goku Black is a Zamasu if... Whis and Beerus had not intervened, and you know, yes. by, by rewinding time yeah, and letting yeah, yeah. that go through, that would be the timeline that yeah. they're acting on. So, wait, Go- Goku Black is the Zamasu of the regular timeline, he is, but Zamasu he's the... is the Zamasu of the Trunks, Trunks timeline. timeline, yes, okay, because yes. he right. travels forward in time using the ring that's been generated from Trunks' time traveling, yeah, because yeah. so they tell two time rings, yeah, sure. and because it's that ring, that's the future he travels to. Right. Okay. Um, because remember that back in earlier episodes, he the um, Goasu is like saying, every so often these other rings appear, and we don't know how why they're appearing. Because <laughs> somebody's fucking with time. Because they're yeah, using the happens. green ones, aren't they? When they're traveling forward in their timeline, and that's the reason why they got the earrings as well. Is because they're both anyway. And then it turns out they killed all the gods. <laughs> <laughs> And then got the super. Side Dragon... note: We killed all the yes. gods. <laughs> got the Super Dragon Ball to wish futures of Asu's immortality, and then they destroyed the Super Dragon Balls as well. So, so much for my idea of them using it to fix Earth. Uh, they can. There's time travel. We can just go back to when they weren't destroyed. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking easy. But can dude. you wish so for things in the future? Make, make a worse possible timeline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wish for no fucking bad timelines. Better timelines. I, I'm increasingly feeling like the series is going to end with the king of all just destroying all universes. <laughs> <laughs> just rebooting it to Dragon Ball. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Turn it off and all again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
dear. Yeah, because this kind of confirms that each time this was happening, it was making dump like it wasn't just their universe it was affecting; it was affecting all the other universes. Because obviously, he's from Universe Ten. Yeah, so it's like it, not only is he creating an alternate universe for Universe uh, Seven. Sorry, uh, wait, is Six the main universe or uh, Seven's the main one? So, so he not only is he creating an alternate Universe Seven, but he's creating an alternate all the other fucking universes. Yes, every time he does that, because they're linked, as we've seen. Yeah, uh, yeah. But despite all that, yeah, there's a lot of action as well because they separate it out oh, yeah. quite nicely with the action. And I would say as if you want a better explanation of what we're saying, watch the episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Because they actually uh, do a fairly good job of explaining. Mm. Much better than what we're doing. Yeah, you get to see from... Actually, in a quite quite a chilling flashback, when uh, you have Goku, regular Goku, at their mercy, is like, hey, Goku, want to know what happened to your family back in my timeline? You tell him, Goku Black. And <laughs> get the flashback and all of them to wish going through... Goku turning into like you know, the swap bodies, and he's like he's working in the field, and he turns into the mask. And it's like, I mean, here the voice actor like trying to deliver Goku's dialogue in his kind of weird kind of uh, country colloquialisms, <laughs> and also uh, seeing uh, Chi Chi and Goten get brutally murdered in cold blood. Yeah, I didn't really need to see that, but you know the implication of it was pretty bad. Mm. Yeah. Wow, this is a, such a good series. It's. Mm. As I say every week, it's crazy how bad it was at the start <laughs> for it to turn into something so good. And now it's super good. Like I, I never thought of it like uh, do something. Like, 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 just, I feel like like this is unusual. Like I haven't felt this about, about like Dragon Ball in in years, even when I've, since I've been watching it. Like, like feels like like genuine kind of thresh and menace here. Like these are guys mm, who have yeah. outmatched them both physically, but also their. Their plan allows for, it's accounting for not just multiple timelines and universes, but everything else as well. <laughs> They've covered all their bases here. It feels like it, if you're generally struggling to figure out how they're going to overcome this, you know, it'll probably yeah. just be some kind of I don't know or power up, which seems to happen at the end <laughs> of the episode. Yeah, uh, but we'll see how it goes down. It's probably the result is a bit more interesting. Yeah, because uh, it's it, there's like he's like getting some blue glow, but he hasn't gone yeah Super Saiyan blue yet. It's something else though it just yeah, seems to be like pure rage you know as he's kind of stomp it's just stomping forward now it's like the very earth is shaking yeah. so it's, it's i wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that he's time traveled so many times <laughs> that it's going to be some sort of time based super saiyan super saiyan chrono uh... possibly because we already know because goku's we know there's like time martial arts because of uh hit hit oh that's yeah. true yeah mm. so do you think we'll get like instant transmission but through time instead of space <laughs> Could well be. Or you'll see oh. six seconds into the future, like another anime we're going to be talking about. <laughs> Man, hearing you guys excited about this makes me more bummed that it's not available legally streaming yeah. somewhere. Well, it's going to be so. I mean, they have, have you read the news about them establishing a department just dedicated to Dragon Ball? Um, <laughs> Dragon well, Ball think... Room. That yeah, sounds like an excuse to have cool meetings and eat donuts. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, I think, like, uh, I saw earlier on the week there that. Uh, it had been licensed. Uh, yeah, bits of Europe are getting it. Bits of soon. Europe, North Africa, uh, kind of Central Asia, different places like that. They are getting it on on TV. That's good. So it could be very slowly kind of trickle its way uh, towards the rest of the world. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, on to the shorts this week. Bono Bono, episode 14. My rock broke, in which Bono Bono's rock breaks. And he's got to go and find a new rock, one that he likes, and also a rock that likes him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very important. And a good thing going on to yeah. rock. Results in him almost getting eaten by a sea lion, which is <laughs> like a... I forget that they're animals and that they have predators. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh right, yeah, I suppose that would happen. <laughs> it was a twist I was not expecting. <laughs> yeah. It's great because it's like it's like oh man, this is going to be a bit long with like trying to figure out what they want to do with themselves and oh it's a threat, weird, <laughs> a really like weird sort of um... undulating like, wobbly threat. Yeah, I, I did like the way Fishing Cat also forgot that there was a threat when he said oh by the way, <laughs> it's, great. It this, it's great. He comes along. It's great. Comes along. Goes yeah, sorry, um, I messed up. <laughs> well, thank God he came. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, I, 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 I've only just watched, I mean, I'm catching up on this show still, but I really do like 
how much of a complete prick Raccoon is. <laughs> like, what a prick. That's his character, yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's just like, yeah, this guy's a prick. And he's like, yeah, okay, I fair think this enough. is the first time when Chipmunk had said, are you going to bully me? And he actually said, yes, I am going to bully you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because he actually says it really late into the episode, I think, is the thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't quite get the uh, grin thing that um, yeah. Chipmunk was I- doing. I guess that's some sort of wordplay, but yeah, yeah. because maybe there's a little kind of sound effect when he does that. So that is it. It's going to be related to him talking about the rock or or something breaking. So yes, I I, I couldn't figure out it. Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, it's a pleasant enough fair. But I felt it was overtaken this week by a seal at a mm. sports day. Shonen Ashibe, Go Go Gomachan, episode 18. Ready, go. This may be the favourite thing I watched all week. <laughs> it's probably the best anime thing all week, anyways. That is true, yes. I've seen a lot, like, but yeah. I yeah, I was like, oh, this looks so good. I better look up who worked on it. And I was like, oh, Nabashin storyboarded this. And the last episode, which he also directed. And the story. <laughs> in fact, all the four out of the five episodes we've just watched of this series. The four we liked were all storyboarded by Nabashin. He's back, baby. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> I think I get the feeling that Ashibe is taking his like energy away from the actual show he's directing. <laughs> that cause... could well be true, yes. <laughs> I would say that he may have done these ages ago because of because of the, the delays due to the Olympics and things. Yeah. Mm. Right, right. But I feel like, like maybe that's good because of the two things he's involved with they're airing right now. Obviously the other show is much more kind of cr- looter and cruder. Much yes. like what you expect from this, but this is like he's got to work within his confines, and if he's covering something new about his abilities, and uh, no, he's not new about. He's done this before, like really many, many. I'd, yeah, he did I'd... that show about uh, the sumo wrestler, which was basically a similar kids show, mm. which he was yeah, in he charge should... of, and he was also he did loads of Tokyo Pig, loads of Tokyo Pig he worked on, right. Yeah, sumo wrestler, the, the, the sumo, the asshole sumo wrestler. No, 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 no. It's about a real life soup. Uh, Kaniki, I think the guy's name was. He had his. Own, he was so popular. He had his own cartoon show. Okay, <laughs> see, I I only know him from like the more much more kind of puerile things. So I, I imagine not, not used to this side of him. I prefer this side of him. If I think. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine this is the thing which pays the bills. A lot more than uh, Excel Sarka did. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's so many jokes in this episode. That's what I loved about it. And it also, it looks great. Yeah. So it's a sports I... day in Japan and also in Nepal. Coincidentally. Coincidentally. A lot of the parents <laughs> get some action. The uh, paparazzi dad's back. He's going to edit out the film of his daughter racing. He'll edit out the winner and put her in his place. Because he has her victory when she gets back up. Yes. Yeah. Um, I felt really bad for her because it's like, oh, it's going to be a lesson about grit and determination and getting back up again. And then her, her dad's like, nah, I'll just edit you. I'll just Photoshop you. And it's like, oh. <laughs> That's she us. doesn't know that. So, okay. Well, he says it out loud to her while he's running yes. alongside. Oh, he, 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 directly, alongside. he directly tells her. Oh, <laughs> Don't worry, sweetie. <laughs> This is legit my first episode of Shonen and Shibe that I've watched. Um, and I did love the like trading cards motif they had going on whenever there was a fight breaking out. Yeah, that yeah, was really good. Because yeah. the payoff like, later when it's the seal versus the, the baby. The, yeah, I love, I, love how it, I love how it says nearby baby. And it's just like, I don't know. And like they even translated the little text underneath which explains what the card does. But it was, on the, it was up for like a frame and then yeah. gone. You have to pause it to just go like, okay, what's the levels on this? How do I use this? Yeah, my own Ashiba card game. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, there's the great bit where they're doing like a stare off at the start of a race, so they don't notice that the race is <laughs> they're already halfway down the track. Yeah. And then he eats that weird, gross ass like Super Lucas Aid or whatever that he made. And oh, yes. so they're like, and then they get stuck together in the three legged race. And of course, he has to run to the toilet to go and crap his pants out. Yeah. Well, he so, won, he won the yeah, race at Mad, I suppose. Yes. Mm. Uh, and of course, the Nepal Sports Day best joke is all the old yogis doing yogic flying racing. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they all appear to be crazy. Yes. Oh. They all have, like, some, one guy is spinning. Go, spinning go. Yeah, that's the teacher's go, teacher. Yeah, that's what I thought. Go, go. Don't, don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at the 
Because it's it's basically, I think it's the joke of dealing with old people is exactly the same as dealing with you know, with little kids. Neither of them give a fuck about your instructions. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that was really fun. Um, I, I like the. Um, is is that a particular one on the sports day? The the bun. Um, yes, because I only know of it from other anime. But so okay. it's either a thing that anime people like to put in, or it is a real sports day thing. Yeah, I figured it was one or the other. But <laughs> well, we seen this have kind of at, at, at a, a kids Halloween party where they like, uh, eat the apple on the screen type of job. Right, right. Yeah, it's just weird that it's a sports day, and it's even weirder as <laughs> a manga day that they're still doing it in uh, high school. <laughs> it makes a little bit more sense in elementary school. It's a game like, of skill. Maybe it's in the Olympics, and I just haven't been watching that bit. Oh, know. and the granddad with the bean throwing thing, he just drops <laughs> loads of beans on the town from an aeroplane. And he just dumps them on some random <laughs> intersection. Yeah, and then there's that great <laughs> shot at the end, that like ridiculously overambitious shot for a weekly kids cartoon show. Oh yeah, where it sort of flies around. Yeah, yeah, that was that was bananas. I was like, man, where would you get the money to do that? Yeah, don't expect time? that. Don't expect that every episode. <laughs> oh no, I, I get that much, but man, that was fun. Yeah, I was elated watching this. Good, good stuff. Mm. Anything else to add before we move on to our next short? Obviously not. Ninja Ooh. Girl and Samurai Master, Episode Two: The Odor Clan and their merry friends, in which we meet a bunch of historical figures who presumably will be important in this series going forward. They were like, are these actual important. people from history? Right? They are indeed, yeah. yes. Okay. Yep. Because I'm not as familiar with this like era of history and that kind of thing. Nor was I, so I looked them all up when I was writing out the, <laughs> ch- the awesome cheat sheet. Okay. So, yeah, we've got, we, who have we got here? We've got, uh, we meet Kinoshita Hideyoshi, who will go on to be the man who ends the Warring States period. But, as of right now, look at him. he looks like a monkey. <laughs> That's the joke. <laughs> also, he warms uh, rice buns in his clothes. This is kind of gross, yeah. Don't yeah. you? And we also meet Mori Yoshinari, who's a samurai who, and vain in this show. In history, his province was overthrown and absorbed by Nobunaga. And we meet Oichi, no- Nobunaga's beloved little sister, his official wife, Kicho, and then at the very end we get mention of Imag- Imagawa Yoshimoto, a rival feudal lord, who apparently died in 1560, and as Oichi was born in 14, 1547, I guess it's somewhere in the late 1550s at the moment. Hmm. Uh, oh, it's just a bunch of gags as per normal introducing these characters who I assume will be recurring later on much in the same way that the early episodes of Shonen Ishibi Go Go Gomachan were just like here's a character we're going to do some jokes with him and he'll come back later <laughs> it's a good format it is yeah and this is a pleasant way to spend three minutes I really like the opening theme as well yeah it's uh, it's, it's pretty cute uh it was a little jarring at first to see this like adorable little ninja girl just glide cool. through a, a, a battalion of soldiers and just gorily slice them up. Uh, and then come out the other side just covered in blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's just part of the appeal, I guess. <laughs> it is, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'm saving this to watch next to Drifters. I think that's the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's a good idea. <clears throat> Get all your Nobunaga done in one week. <laughs> Anything else to add? I I did like the gag where um, the monkey dude was like, "Oh, show us your like shadow clone stuff and make a giant frog appear." A la oh, Naruto. Yeah. And then the like wife lady who looked very sensible and sane comes off and goes and exact asks the exact same question. Yes, that was pretty good. I do have to tell people on the comments thing. Everyone was going, "Oh, it's a Naruto reference! It's a Naruto reference!" Okay, oops, guys, guys, yeah. guys. The Naru- things in Naruto are a reference themselves. <laughs> what to then? Uh, basically, is it the Koga Ninja Scroll? Uh, basically, a pulp novel from the fifties, and then a bunch of s- copies, and then movies in the sixties. There's loads of things which have got those things. That like, sort of idea, yeah. That idea, and riding, mm. even the like riding on frogs, is a thing. 
Yeah, there's like a 1966 uh, sort of a kaiju and ninja film. There's definitely got a ninja riding on a horned toad. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah, they, they weren't invented for Naruto. But basically, it's, um, you know, the anime series Basilisk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's based on that series of novels, or novel, rather. Maybe it's on a sham. Yes. Basically, the way we think of ninjas behaving was kind of invented in the 50s. <laughs> so they're a bit like Batman in that uh, <laughs> they're a much more modern invention. Okay, on to not ninjas, but ice skating. Yuri on Ice, episode two. Two Yuris? Drama and Utopia. In which the other Yuri shows up. And now they must fight. The <laughs> they must. Yeah. In a well, they just basically bit each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, boy, this is this might be my favourite thing overall airing. At yeah, the moment. it's it's crazy good, especially because you've got Victor um, basically sort of running the entire show himself. And it's great because, like, he show, he, you know, he's, you know, sort of getting used to the place and getting, like, sort of settling in. But he's also just in, insa- he's just intensely cutting the whole time, basically giving Yuri, like, the Japanese one, no slack whatsoever. Yeah. Which is actually really good. The fact that he was such a pretty boy, he'd be a massive prick. I think that's what really helps, though, because he, he's like, there's a point to all of it, right? It's like yeah. when he eats the tonkatsu and he says, like, "Oh, do you like eating this, Yuri?" And Yuri's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Well, how come you're eating it? You don't, you haven't won anything, like." It's a great bit. <laughs> you think um, he's all kind of character and was like, ha, 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 I must break you. Yeah. Well, he's kind of, yeah, he's... <laughs> yeah, that is basically it. Yeah. He's it's a fact... Russian coach. He's just yeah. not, not in the form you normally expect him to be yeah. in. Mm. I like the fact the other Russian, the Yank, uh, is it Yankov? Yakov? Yakov. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, their previous Russian coach. In the previous episode, we just saw him yelling in the background. And now you kind of get to see his personality yelling in the foreground this episode well, over the phone and whatnot yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i did i did really love that line where um victor's like oh i'm gonna go do what i like i've had enough of listening to you and then the guy just screams at the airport you've never actually listened to me what is this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but i think he gets away with it because he's also flirting with everybody constantly oh yeah he's just he's it's great because you, he look he looks you know, unimpeachable in all of his performances and his persona, but then he's just a massive twit um, and a massive flirt and just a massive like, I'll do what I like. I'll just do it well, so no one calls me on my shit and, ever. Yeah, he's not really running it all on his own. He's got three helpers. <laughs> we have to yeah. say, who are also yeah. running things. The, the the rise of the shadow emperors <laughs> in the way of the little children is pretty great. I don't, I feel like this is the ultimate show that, like, in terms of writing and sort of plot planning it seems to have like more modernity in it than you'd ever believe because yeah, most, yeah. most of the plot elements are occurring via Instagram. Like I, fucking, I, lo- I love that bit where he's like, oh, I'll take a picture of myself with a shrine. No, then you'll know I'm in Japan. And then he sees a sweet jumper and can't resist taking a selfie well, he, and putting even it on Vic- Twitter. Yeah, because it's great because Victor doing it sets the entire thing off and then Yuri, <laughs> Russian version, comes along and of course is like, oh, I love that awful shirt. and you know, <laughs> Cool fashion. <laughs> But even I, best, I did yeah. love how Twitter took that and immediately sort of photoshopped the hell out of it within half an hour. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 and he also is that the uh, Russian Yuri, the younger Yuri, is mm. written so well as a teenager. Oh, it's yeah, great. He, really he is, seems like a brat. Yeah, he really is a brat. But he, you can tell also that like the thing that he took to heart was like a kind of throwaway thing. But that's what kids, that's what yeah. teenagers do is they take yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. To be the end of the world and to be the single like it's great. You can tell that Victor has the, the almost wants to say it himself. Where like Yuri, if you applied yourself, you could make your own bloody routine and like have your senior debut. You don't need me to do it, but he isn't coming out and saying it straight away. And so. yeah, there's also the bit where um, Yurio, as he gets called, is yelling <laughs> at so Yuri. Good. I love I love how like Yuri's sister meets Russian Yuri and goes, "Oh, giving you a nickname. Here we go." Uh, and the way he's yelling at uh, Yuri, and it's like it, Yuri at first is like reacting to how he did in the first episode, and then he sort of realizes oh, he's just a kid. <laughs> this isn't this isn't as threatening as I need to feel it. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it's got a little monologue. It's like, one this guy thinks I'm just a mild mattered dweeb, but I'm just gonna like good and bear it, and I'll fucking show him on the eyes by God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's a really nice moment for kind of both of them. <clears throat> and it defines um, Russian Yuri, uh, Yuri's character without um, 
needing to spell it out because we're yeah. seeing it from that other character's point of view how he's how he's in, yeah. realizing he is now and then the reaction to the music at the end of the episode is the other thing which mm. then, and also i like how victor basically just says you're both mediocre <laughs> That's yeah, it's that, like that, I'm fucking yeah. great. You guys suck. So if you want to work with me, I really enjoyed that because it's the, I, I love that as him saying that to be like, hey, like get your shit together. Stop getting fucking wind up your ass. Like you stop being humble and pissing about, and you stop being a prick. Fucking work for me, bitches. Like it's yeah. real good. This isn't the kind of like I believe in you. You can do anything you want. Kind of inspiration. This is more like the kind of Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross style inspirational speech. Where it's like, you want to work here, you close. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, it, this episode, this episode, this show so far is doing like a lot of um, uh, differences than you get from like a regular anime thing. And I know it only takes them like an episode of, over the course of what I assume is weeks to lose the weight, but at least he has to fucking lose the weight. You know, yeah. that, that's nice to actually see. Yeah, good stuff. Definitely highly recommend it. If it's not mm. on your watch list, stick it on there. Now, on to more disappointing returns. <laughs> Bungo Stray Dogs, Ooh. episode 14. Is this the show now? Nowhere to return. Oh, it feels <laughs> like it's going to be for at least two more episodes, I think. Oh my god, I don't care. I don't, I, I, I I don't care. I thought it would happen up here, but no, it's going to keep going. Uh... <laughs> okay, Drifters, episode one. <laughs> No, no, let's fucking do it. Let's just well, get it we got, we got out of the way. Out even briefly. <laughs> so, what? The fucking guy who's with glasses, whose name I don't care about because who cares? He was like, like they, they, they the organization, what's it called? Mimic. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. They had him captured, so they had to try and hunt him down. And or maybe, is he a traitor? Or know. is he actually working for them? Because he, he was, your man the guy whose name I don't fucking remember who, who isn't one of our main cast Sadunosuke <laughs> is it Oda <laughs> something other uh, yeah Jensen I can't think because like, for fuck's sake there was a scene like in the diner where I was like uh, he goes to me he's like his old friend and, and, and his kids and then that it turns up because it's, because it's a diner but I'm saying ah yes my good friend Oda Sadunosuke who comes by this place to check on the orphans uh, from the thing yeah. and you were this guy you were this kind of friend and it's like this is like night and day to the show I remember, you know? Yeah, they're basically yeah. named after the other two authors from the decadent school of writing. Right, yeah. I figured they were contemporaries. That's why they were pals. Yeah. Well, obviously, the writers of this show weren't reading those books. <laughs> 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 they could take a few lessons from those, maybe. Uh, but, yeah, so the Glasses dude was a double... He postulates he was a double agent. Turns out, um, by the end, he's a triple agent. Or he was just a regular spy. <laughs> It's, yeah, I guess triple that would work. Because there's a bunch of people show up at the end who we've not seen before who he actually seems to be working with. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you said, now there's a bunch of other things like that where it's like, oh, he actually cares for the orphans. And as I says to the dudes, where a bunch of guys are like, oh, I know that guy. He sucks. He doesn't even fucking kill people. Not like cool yeah. dude like me. And he's like, he'd fuck you up, dude. But, but except if you poison a ball, that would get him, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but really, you can see why Dazai like swap sides because the people, these people he was hanging out with before, are fucking boring. Yeah, I know. Because you think the Port Mafia, and uh, uh, that was the show, like the prior show we watched, where it was like, oh man, these Port Mafia guys look cool. Oh, look at these guys. They're from Black Lizard. You got to watch out. But they're fucking terrible. And I liked that. But in this show, it's like, yeah, let's hang around with the Port Mafia. And I was like, no, those guys suck. <laughs> why would we want to be here? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there's too much talking. Oh my god, there's altogether too much oh. talking. <laughs> so many scenes of people sitting. It's like this from should the be back a radio talking. drama. <laughs> not yeah, an anime. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, like, it's funny to watch. Imagine reading this fucking shit. <sighs> <laughs> Maybe it comes across quicker when you're reading. I don't know. Yeah, it's a light novel, so it probably does. Mm. Well, you just skip to the end and fucking. That's how, that's how I left the Port Mafia and, and the other two guys fucking died. Or one of them died, we know it from the game of and this other guy's pissed off somewhere. Yep. Uh, like I was, I thought I wanted to, wanted to find out. Oh, that, that's fast way. Why do you need the port mafia? Now I don't give a fucking. Toss like the the closest thing to interesting is your man's power to see six seconds into the future, which yeah. is kind of like yeah, interesting of them escaping an exploding building. So he he knew which way to go to not get exploded the most, kind of thing. Um, yeah. That was that was kind of a cool idea, but I feel like that could have worked better visually, you know? It's very specific as to how it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's basically only after 
he realizes that the danger has happened, uh, can he then, you know, do something to try and avoid it? I guess that's less to go away to make it too, stop making it too OP, but yeah, it can also be, this would only work function properly under very particular circumstances. I so think it was the fact that, he, like he said, the guy knew someone used, who someone poisoned this fucking football who knew what, how my powers work and put a poison that would take seven seconds to enact or something like that, you know? Yeah, now who do you know who is, who, who you've become aware of has been involved in some, like, double dealing over the last while? Who yeah. Yeah. Uh, dear. So, Drifters episode one. Yeah. yeah. Fight song, Please. in which we check in on Hirano's D and D campaign, where everyone's rolled up historical figures. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, basically, we follow uh, what's his face? What's this guy's name? There's going to be so. Many... That's him. One dead samurai, uh, who died in 1600. Yeah, but we get to see that whole how he died thing, and that was pretty sweet. Yes. And he <laughs> finds himself in a white corridor with a man silently chain-smoking. <laughs> He's like, excuse me, I'm on lunch break. And he gets sucked through a door and dropped in a world where he's found by a couple of elves. And they're like, oh, Jesus, not another one of these fuckers. Come on, let's drag him into the woods. <laughs> and he goes, are we going to get in trouble for going into the woods? Well, We're going to get in trouble for seeing him, so fuck yes. it. Yeah, as long as we don't say anything, we're not going to get in trouble. I mean, they didn't swear as much as me, but no. yeah, basically. And they dump yeah. him off with a couple of these other uh, round ears that they found previously. Mm. Who are Oda Nobunaga, who died in 1582, aged 47, as we know, he's a samurai master. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Nasu no Yoichi, who died sometime around the 12th and thir- or 13th century. Yeah, like if they say it was 400 years before their yes. time or something. And uh, this Should we guy... really be watching this at the same time? Because it's like the sequel to Ninja Girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this guy it looks younger than most historians would have him dying. So, Of course, mm-hmm. there's the entire possibility that he isn't who he says he is as well. That's true as well. Like your man keeps uh, guessing or yeah. assuming, yeah. Because the yeah. main thing is like, whoa. Because Odin Obadag is like, whoa, you... that much time has passed? Because yeah. well, well, for him, well, he's been there a year or something, isn't it? Yeah. And your man says he's been dead for 13 years yeah. at yeah. that stage. They're almost Sorry, competing not. over it, saying, you think you're dead? I've been dead longer. And then that's the original one saying, you guys are fucking babies. Everyone, I've been dead for, for, for centuries now. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff about uh, Shimazu thinking, you're ghosts or demons, I've got to fight you. <laughs> well, he saw the L dudes and assumed they were demons. He's like, yeah, I'm probably in hell. Okay. <laughs> People explain also why. Hey, why well, this guy's dead? This this place why he's he's here. Yeah. yeah but even is, though he says he's dead, he says you're probably just a demon in disguise to trick me. Yes. <laughs> and isn't there a guy from the Vietnam War in the corridor as well? Yeah. He as comes soon in, as he leaves, yes, there's a Vietnam yeah. vet there. Yeah. Or not vet actually. No. I assume. <laughs> no, I don't think he <laughs> makes <laughs> a vet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, not much. Not much else revealed in this first episode. It's mainly introducing us to our leads. Hmm. Mm. Some some good That's, jokes and good um, kind of humorous yeah. bits mixed yeah. in with the incredible violence. Yeah, it's our taking all the kind of the humorous bits from the back pages of like Hirano's mangas is putting them like right in the episode. That, but they're in the <laughs> comic as much as well. Like, but they're much mm. more front and center in this. Whereas yeah, something yeah. like say Hell Scene, it would have been kind of pushed to the margins of the actual TV show. Mm. It's it's nice to see, and I think it does because I think if it was all like I thought you were dead, I killed a hundred men, you know, it'd be just too much. Where it's like, here, pluck this chicken. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I guess we have to pluck chickens now. Yeah, so there's a scene with all three of them plucking chickens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Also, I really liked how the first half of the episode looked, or it was directed well and made to look that good. Mm, um, some good use of CG berserk. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> also, as well, like uh, like the like the red and brown kind of color scheme gets a lot of flack. But the different ones I talk about. This is kind of t- took that and made it look good. Uh, well, it makes all the reds really bold and makes mm. them stand out. So yeah, it worked very well. Oh, it's David production. Was it? Do we know if Kamikaze are involved in the CG bits? Oh, hmm. uh, let's see. I actually have it up here. What's that? Like? Um, CG animation. Felix Film. Okay. And they have done, let's see. 
uh, Terraformers, Scared oh. Riders X, <laughs> <laughs> and the Yu Gi Oh! Dark Side of the Mentions movie. Okay, yeah, I, I enjoy this, and I'm uh, happy to watch more of this show. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, you want to talk about Flip Flappers? You, because you, uh, Niall and uh, Dwayne watched it. Episode two. Yeah, sure. Um, um, yeah, it's kind of we kind of get them kind of the not the, side of kind of, kind of, <laughs> the flip side of that. You now where we saw in the last episode how Coconut was kind of I guess the normal everyday girl um, and Papika. Coconut she, she seems to be going about every day life now as if nothing happened from before, but then Papika shows up riding the flying surfboard next to a school bus or, or the train or whatever. Like, oh, yes, this, that, that did actually happen, didn't it? Uh, yeah, I did like that, because you think they were going to keep all the weird shit separate from um, the the fantasy stuff, but there she is riding beside the fucking tram, and everyone's just like, who's that fucking girl on the flying surfboard? Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. And, like, her... I guess her, her, I guess her good friend, I guess trying to like watch off for her and say, "Who's this like weirdo keeps following you? What do you think about this?" No, I don't mind her. I'll take care of us. And you know, she's obviously worrying after her friend uh, that you know this crazy red haired girl on a flying surfboard is following her around. But also, she feels like you no, know, she's hanging around with her a lot as well. Like you know, is she going to like this kind of ditch me and go off on this one? There seems to be a little bit of like uh, uneasiness around her, which I like. We'll see that that turns into anything else. I'm hoping they don't go like the romance thing with it because the, the main everyday normal girl seems like everyone there. Like the someone in our class saw her looking at a painting and said, you should join the art club. You know, they're just like, really? we got to get this one on our side. She's great. Mm -hmm. They're all very interested in her. I guess she's the main character. <laughs> it's the yeah. only logic I could think well, of. Well, I, I recall her saying like, no, like, uh, that she could go to any school she wanted to. So she's obviously she's very high achieving, mm. but she's just, I guess, not very... She's very modest about it. I don't know. Okay. Um, anyways, they wound up, you know, uh, going to whatever kind of fantasy world, going down the rabbit hole, uh, so to speak. And yeah. they wind up in some strange dimension where they become, like, part rabbit people. And yeah, this... and all the colors are inverted, like in JoJo when shit goes down. Yeah, and they have just, like, <laughs> uh, insatiable urge to try and gnaw on things. Uh, because they have rabbit teeth now. They're, yeah. Yes, they're rabbit teeth, yeah. I'm not sure if that um, was supposed to be, like, a weird sex thing because they kept presenting it like the... <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know. <laughs> it was it was kind of odd, yeah. Yeah, this is kind of put in motion because uh, Coconut has this pet green rabbit thing. Um, yeah, and it got hoovered up by I think the campus's automatic uh, cleaning gadgetry. <laughs> well, I don't think that's normal, dude, because it moved a statue of David out of the way in order to just pop out this giant vacuum cleaner. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's I, supposed I to be there. I thought it was some like automatic uh, this uh, campus cleaning. Like get to treat us, you know, if it detected like some kind of rubbish around the vicinity of the statue, was kind of hoovered up. Right. Okay. I don't know. Maybe oh, it could be something else entirely. I don't know. <laughs> so go to fancy world to try and find the rabbit, and uh, it's complete kind of sort of dream logic like type of thing. And it's like I guess that could be the kind of the, the point of it, where they're it's a strange thing. They get turned the rabbits, and they want to know on things, and then they wind up in the guts of this giant machine that it's tries to punch them up. Yeah. Yeah, and the pet rabbit shows up, but he's now turned into this, this like big hulking green dude. Looks super cool. Uh, yeah, he looks like a stand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, this time, Coconut is in danger, and like Pappy Cat then awakens to her strange power that we saw Coconut exhibit in the previous episode. So um, they have some kind of shared abilities, or their fates are intertwined somehow, mm. and. And they get out of that mess, and Coconut is, uh, seems to be, you know, uh, previously wants to have no normal, so wants to have a normal everyday life. Because the last time I went to a Jew, I almost got killed. Uh, that's part of my job. And, and it, it kind of turns out like it wasn't so much her own thing she was worried about. It was the fact that you won't risk her fucking life and came back covered in plasters and shit for her fucking <laughs> glasses. And she's like, dude, don't like kill yourself over me. Yeah, she, she didn't want that. There's some. It's more so the guilt uh, of of that girl getting hurt. Than um, her own uh, fear for her own personal safety. Yeah, and they find another fragment, and then Colgan, uh, Pappy guy says, "Okay, we gotta bring this to the the flip flap group," and they seem yeah. to be the guys who are over this uh, dimension hopping business. And they say, "Okay, we, we you got jobs, you we gotta send you to all different dimensions. You gotta find the fragments for something. We don't know what it is yet. Uh, I think they said they grant wishes, so I think they can... said they want to turn the weird fucking trippy scape." 
what, what did they call that again? The, yeah, the like mysterious leader of the group says that like, the the realms is called a uh, pure illusion. They want to liberate That's... pure illusion. Yeah, yeah. Whatever that means. Um, yeah, so right. we're, we're gonna don't know a lot of. We, we're getting an idea of what's happening, but we still don't know exactly what is happening yeah. in the plot. Like the the post credits thing from the first episode, which, uh, if I recall, robots turned up, and like chloroformed the girls and presumably took a fragment. I don't think that's ever referenced or touched upon, unless I'm yeah. missing something here. Um, because it, when she wakes up, I initially thought I was playing the first episode because the exact same events play out with the grannies at the bed. And it's like, oh, did you have a dream? That kind of thing. Um, mm. And I was like, wait, am I watching episode one? And I had to pause it for a sec just to see the actual title come up. Um, yeah, it just seems to be like nearly like a reset button on it. So yeah. not exactly sure what's happening there either. Yeah, did, did this will... Uh be one that will show up things further illuminations of things when if you rewatch earlier episodes knowing mm-hmm. what you will eventually learn in later on in the series or that would be my thought anyway hopefully yeah episode. yeah um, um, at the moment it's really like plot light and it's just like check out this crazy sequence which I'm fine with it's just mm-hmm. um, there's not really much meat there to get someone kind of hooked and um mm-hmm. I, I think that's a bit of a problem, and not not in its favor, like you know. Yeah, that could be it. That could be what would put me off. But like, I, personally, I don't mind. I'm actually kind of intrigued by it. I want to see what happens to it. I definitely don't mind looking at it. Uh, cause no, it, no. I mean, like that's a good enough to reason watch. to watch it. Yeah, absolutely. It's pure visually, yeah. Uh, mm. Just funny little moments in there, like <laughs> like Pappy Cat turns up. You know, uh, she's wanting to guess blend in. She's kind of blending in, I guess. What she. Is expected to be so she comes up dressed like a magical girl uh and cooking and i was like what what the fuck are you doing here you can't be here it's like oh no i'm the uh what you call us i am the uh transfer student that's right <laughs> yeah dressed in the most frilliest kind of dress she can manage pay no uh, attention to the girl in the pretty dress please she's doing a very bad job of blending in and i'm kind of curious <laughs> yeah. as to how that's going to work out because if all this weird shit exists in the real world for lack of a better term then how that's is it going to bleed over more and more as the show goes on, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering now as well, just thinking of this, like, uh, if they're going to go to different kind of riffs on fairy tales, because, like, the first that seems episode to be it, yeah. had, like, a Hansen and Gretel type of thing where they're leaving the, the trail of, of breadcrumbs or whatever it is for the, the, uh, through the forest and everything. In, yeah, uh, yeah. In the forest and everything, and they kept eating them. And this guess was they go down a rabbit hole, they Following a rabbit, is this like an Alice in Wonderland type of job? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll, I, I, I think they're going to like have some play and those kind of things going forward. We'll see what they do. Like mm. I said, I'm intrigued. I will keep on this. Yeah. Now, Niall, you kept on Time Bocan 24, just as I did. Yeah. Quick chat about the Wright brothers were actually an only child. Ah. In which it turned out that the Wright brothers were actually an only child. What? Yeah. <laughs> So it was only um, Wilbur, or is it Orville? I forget. Which I, I think it's Wilbur. Yeah. Basically, in this one, it it feels more like what the actual plot of this show should be, in that the villains are trying to alter history so it resembles the history in the history books, which I don't <laughs> think they were doing in the last episode. <laughs> well, they were Their doing sol- a really bad job of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Their solution is to <laughs> get Wilbur to go out in the town and get drunk every night. <laughs> To coerce them into yes, then with a brother that they've man. built for. Well, they, they brought to life, haven't they? Because he'd already yeah. got this dummy brother. Yeah, because like a... rather than make aeroplanes, his he he uh, makes bicycle headlights. Didn't weren't they bicycle makers? They least? were, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't want to fly, so they kind of force him to fly. And then they make a mecha, which is a drone mecha. And they're like, oh, <laughs> like delivering pizza. And then this drone mecha fires pizzas at people. Yes. <laughs> so, are we so modern? But I kept forgetting, you guys are from the 24th century. You must have like, gone to hover cars by now. <laughs> what are you this again? But I don't know. Uh, which the uh, good guy's mecha then eats the pizza. Because it's just a pizza. It's not a weapon. And then we <laughs> cut to inside and everybody's eating, eating the pizza inside. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, I thought this worked better than the first episode. 
Yeah, not bad. I, I, I do a whole montage of it of this like uh, Wilbur and the dummy going out into town and fun. They became known not as the Wright brothers, but the Knight brothers because they knew all the best places to go in town and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and also there's the bit of the first episode where the female lead Callan is like wistfully looking off going he's not here either and then we revealed in this episode that everyone else noticed her doing that and apparently she yeah. does this all the time <laughs> it's better um, that way just just stick it out there let it hang like make everyone like shrug and go yeah we know she does this come on and apparently it's her boyfriend the robots tell Tok- Tokyo uh, what, else, what other things of note? Oh yes, we were both right. The the head villain has a a pig face, but the pig nose skull the, face thing. Yeah, the, but the nose of the pig is a skull. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we were both right last time. But yeah, it's uh, a lot of fun. Now, did you watch Tiger Mask episode two? Anybody? Just me then. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, never mind. I to. It's hard to watch because it's not on in the UK. So. You gotta get put on your VPN mask, as I did. Anyway, the <laughs> second episode I'll just briefly say is like a very weird. Uh, it always comes across as like this is how you should act if you're a promoter of a wrestling promotion. <laughs> is it is it doing? I saw you saying that. Is it like um, uh, what was like a manager for a an idol group? Is uh, it doing that kind of a. It's a bit like, but it's also like yeah, how to. If you're putting, they basically they talk about oh we've got to, we're putting on this big show, but to build this big show we've got to put on a smaller show which builds up to that. And then like the <laughs> agent, the uh, the is it is she the niece of the trainer? Yeah, she is, isn't it? Yeah, 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 I think so. She's like she goes to the New Japan show and she's like uh, and and Yuji, uh, Yuji Nagata's explaining and here's where we sell all our merchandise and she's like <gasps> merchandise I'm gonna get merchandise for Tiger Mask. <laughs> <laughs> How to buy Tiger Mask? Yes. <laughs> and it's like they almost tell off the young lion from New Japan for winning the match. It's like because in a in a normal match he would be the one taking the fall, obviously because it's fixed in real life. But they're almost disappointed that he won. It's like oh, he won. You put on a good show, but <laughs> it would be better for building up the next match if he'd lost. <laughs> yeah, so it's like weirdly educational. It's like if you've never seen. Which would make sense if it was airing at a time kids could watch it, but it airs at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, and anyway, on to the final thing we watched this week. Classicaloid, episode one. Beats and Motes and Otto Wacken. Boy, this throws you right into the action. Mm. Yeah. There's kind of a lot. <laughs> but I don't know, I really enjoyed this. Mostly because it... I, don't know, I feel like open with Mozart uh, making Rosa like, was a funny enough gag to keep the entire thing going through stupidity. Yes. And then get like all your characters stepped in there. And so by the end of it, like you're kind of done with the whole weird ass, like very exceedingly twee um like mansion, like freaking grand designs on drugs. Um and then it moves on to like showing you like I suppose who might be villains or antagonists or oh, a secret yeah. organisation of some kind. Thanks, Robo. Which was Robo right. Elliot. <laughs> You're a bit robotic at the moment. You've got oh, your annoyed. lines broken up. Uh, yes, yeah, so we meet Beethoven, a very loud man who is in search of the perfect gyoza. Mm, is that a pun really or something? I'm not understanding I don't why. Know. I mean, like, gyoza is great. But yeah, yeah, I don't like you understand said, why he's into it's a worthy cause. I understand why he's loud because obviously they kind of seem to latch onto like one thing you know about the composer <laughs> and extrapolate it. Okay, Beethoven, just like... Beethoven was deaf, therefore he's a very loud. He is Joseph Joestar, and he's going to be shouting all the time. Yeah, <laughs> he just wa- he just wanted the purity of moment that came with like burning food, I guess. <laughs> and it's like Mozart. Oh, he was a child prodigy, so therefore we shall make him a very childish man who rolls around on heelys. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cool, right? <laughs> I, I, mean, I I just like his. I just like how no one's pointing out how absurd his hat is. It's like what what are you well, wearing? The rest You're... of him is so absurd. It's hard to focus on just. But the he's hat. He, he's like a pink ice muffin or something. The heelys <laughs> are the the heelys are the most sensible part of him. I don't know where he found a go- a bowling pin to then attach to a rope to then try and like like centrally wheelie wheel you know sort of wall of death himself around the main hallway. <laughs> he found like, the bowling pin in the guy's room. 
Yeah, yeah, he found it in that dude's room. Yes. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember he was playing with it. I just, <laughs> I just love how he's like, "Oh, they're going to knock this house down. I'm going to help by swinging on this chandelier with this like improvised tool that's somehow going to yes. fix the save the day." And uh, I, I don't know. I think it was more like, no, if your girl has got to like, you know, be demolished tomorrow, I must well take it off for one last spin. Wee! <laughs> I know it, it worked perfectly because by that point I was like, yeah, sure, he'd do that. Of course he would, and then it all fixes it. So hooray! Yeah. So, so. but yeah, so the the gist of the plot for this episode is we learn where these two men have come from. They've been sent to the house of Kanai Ottawa. It's their her grandmother's house. She's in charge of it because her father has wandered off. The spending father's wandered his... off and the mother left him or something, yes. wasn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. Spending his yeah. inheritance. And um, he's given these two fellas letters of introduction to stay at this house. Beyond that, she doesn't know why, who they are, why they're called Beethoven and Mozart. Uh, but she's selling the house and it's going to be... Is she selling out? It's been foreclosed. It can't, couldn't quite tell. It's, it's, it's foreclosed. Foreclosed. I think they're, they're foreclosed. The house is to, to, to get a buyer lined up and they're going to manage it. Yes. Yeah, so... I think the, I like the establishing, one of the establishing shots is like a sign on the thing saying like, please leave, please pay your fucking bills yeah. or we're house for yes. destruction or whatever. So, yeah. so uh, but also she's got, but she means she's got to get her friend, Sosuke Kagura, to come round and take all his stuff out he's storing in her house. Which apparently is loads of musical instruments that he bought and never got round to learn how to play properly. I thought he was living there from the setup he had. <laughs> well, that, that, that's his side of the story, but he's not. <laughs> Seemingly not. And, yeah, so this is all going on, and then there's like a dream. She's have, had this dr- her grandmother's dream of holding a ball once again in this building, and there's this organ which won't start. There's a whole... All sorts of events lead to the organ starting... And uh, Beethoven suddenly transforming the entire world into a psychedelic. <laughs> well, for ruining his his gyoza, yeah. Yes, um, crazy a land. Psychedelic version of the yes. Sixth Symphony, where yeah. the organ turns into a robot and dances with the, the demolishing ball, which is also turned into a robot. I initially thought they were going to fight, and then they start ballroom dancing. Yeah, like, that's better. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what I assumed as well. And I'm like, oh, sweet, a fight. Oh no, this is better. Yeah, unfortunately, so. I had it spoiled. I had seen the screenshot of two robots dancing, and I was like. I have got to watch this show as soon as possible. Yeah, and that bit, I'm... that sequence at the end—if they're going to pull that off every episode, this is going to be an amazing show. Yeah, yes, I, good. Uh, I really love this show because of how effortless it was. Like, it just kind of did stuff. Like, it sounds crazy, but it just like, it just did things and it all worked. It's like, oh, okay, there's Beethoven and freaking Mozart hanging out. Sure, fine, whatever. Okay, and now there's this, and now there's his her like idiot friend who they keep poking him, saying, "Ah, oh, girlfriend, huh?" And it's like, no. And your, your main, the main girl is actually somewhat mature and like also kind of grown up and isn't just like a friggin' 14 year old or whatever, some garbage. And then you have like everything go. And then they have the secret friggin' like entrance way back into the house after they've been kicked out somehow. And just all this stuff keeps happening one after another. And by the end, you're like, yeah, that all worked. It all hung together really well. And it all made a really fun, like really active half an hour watching. So I just, and then at the end, you get the secret society, or whatever, turning up, and which I can't wait to have, see how that play pays off because everything was totally fun. Yes, we learned apparently so, at the end. At the end, we learned these two are rogue classicaloids, and they're being hunted by a group Bark. who are apparently led by Bark. It is Bark dressed as Arnold Schwarzenegger? Because like I'll be Bark. <laughs> That's the only reason I could think of why he was wearing those shades. You could be right there, Dwayne. You could. Well. I had not considered that, but I hope that is the case because I would laugh my nuts off. That's, that's a bad joke. <laughs> no, it's great. I love it. Like, let the joke be bad. Let the joke be bad. Uh, the but char- yeah, character designs really are so great as well. Yeah, hmm. and and your man who does, um, you know, uh, Mozart's like voice acting. Um, well, you know, Gintama dude or whatever the hell his name it's is. Crazy. I forget. His, yeah, yeah, Koichi. Like he's he's having a b- whale of a time doing the voice acting on that guy. Like it's great fun to listen to him because he's having he's just bellowing out. Yeah, he's usually like the best character in it anyway, so far. Yeah, anyway. yeah, at least so far. But mm. yeah, yeah. I'm looking. I know it's like different artists do the music for each composer as well. Apparently, so mm. I would hope that they get at least more than one piece of music to use per episode, though, because while I liked the arrangement they had for uh, Beethoven's uh, symphony there it kind of wore us welcome by time to use it for the <laughs> opening the internal song and the ending song uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I'm going to guess you're not going to get that because I bet this yeah. is a 12 episode series and we have nice 12 tracks to stick on an album <laughs> <laughs> yeah that seems to be 
probably what they'll do. <sighs> but yeah, looking forward to the next episode. And that's it. Oh, well, the, the end sequence also reveals a bunch of guys. Oh, yes. Kind of excited. Is it Chopin sitting in a cardboard Chopin. box? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have been, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm just curious because based on who we've seen so far, like which single element of the composer are they going to uh, draw out a character, a cartoon character from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that ends this week's episode of Let's Go JoJo. Be back here next week to hang with the Let's Go gang. And in the meantime, please check out our regular podcast, The Secret of the Sale of Madness. Blogspot.com, Dynamizing the Brain. Com, and Elliot. Uh, UK-anime.net and subscribe to our YouTube channel to listen live uh, except this week he didn't go so well goodbye <laughs> <laughs> bye. bye oh no <laughs>